places that when you come to the Ningo Prom Prom district, you would like to visit. One of these outstanding places that we've always spoken about is the African Ancestral Wall, located in Ningo Prom Prom district on the stretch between Ningo and Prom Prom. Today, here on Prom Prom Boy TV on YouTube, we are going to be telling you about some of the wonderful things that you must know about the African Ancestral Wall. Let me once again welcome you. If this is the first time that this is appearing on your screens, you are welcome to your favorite channel, the Pram Pram Boy TV channel. Kindly click on the subscribe button if this is your first time watching us. Click on the like button to like our video, make a comment and share our video so that we can be able to together build a big family. So as I'm here at the African Ancestral War, you know, whenever I come to places like this, I don't know much about the place, so it's always good that I speak to the people who have much idea about the place, so that they give us the needed education on the place. So let me quickly welcome our daddy is here. Our daddy is here. He's going to be introducing himself to us. Uh, yes, you're welcome. You're welcome, daddy. Yeah, all right. All right, all right, right. right. Yeah, so you are welcome to the Prom Prom Boy TV channel. You are welcome to the Prom Prom Boy TV channel. All right, Prom Prom Boy. Prom Prom Boy TV channel. TV, we got it. <laughs> so please introduce yourself to us. Uh, my name is Jerry Johnson. All right. Um, I'm from Los Angeles, California. Okay. I've been around Ghana for about oh, about 17 years now. Okay. So um, I'm here. We've done an African ancestral wall, and okay. we can tell you all about it uh, when you're ready. Right. So. You know, the, the, when you came to Ghana, what are some of the wonderful things that uh, made you to stay in Ghana, looking at the African continent as a black continent that you like to come to? Uh, what, what caught your attention to stay in Ghana? Well, as I tell people, you know, Ghana is a pretty calm place. And um, being an English-speaking place in West Africa, you know, a lot of the African-Americans, uh, so-called, come from West Africa somewhere. Mm. So whether you go to Senegal or Guinea or Ghana or Nigeria, Ivory Coast, uh, you see a lot of people that look like our people in mm. the U.S. Mm. Uh, but here in Ghana, we, we know we have a lot of uh, slave dungeons and a lot of trading going on here. Mm. And, and frankly, English speaking is easier for us who have uh, come from the U.S. Okay. Uh, somewhere like that. So mm. the language and just knowing that this is a kind of an area where a lot of our people have come uh, okay. made it a good choice for me. Right. right. So you came to Ghana and you decided to set up the African Ancestral Wall. Yes. What, what made you to do that? Uh, well, basically, um, for some years around, I was going into schools mm. uh, young, for the youngsters all the way up to the uh, you know, senior secondary talking about African history. Okay. Unfortunately, inside of um, Ghana and Africa in general, uh, we don't have the, the African curriculum that we okay. should have. So we have to learn everything about uh, Queen Elizabeth and uh, Henry's eighth wives and all of the rest of this. <laughs> okay. The London fire of 1666, but you won't even know anything about the land you're standing on okay. and the people who fought for either liberation, uh, nation building, brilliance, uh, warriorship organization, all of these things, our own African people, mm. we don't know because they're not in our curriculum, they're not in our common uh, uh, media. And okay. so I thought I would just try to do my part to bring some of that to the students primarily. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Right, so we, we can see some drawings on the wall. This is the entrance of the wall. We can see some drawings on the wall. Yes. We can see uh, Marcos Gave, mm -hmm. uh, Kwame Nkrumah, uh, Jonas Kabu, Te Jangma the first. Is, is there anything, why did you pick this, these drawings at the entrance of, uh, to, the, to the ancestral wall? Well, I mean, you may notice that uh, the biggest drawing I have is of Marcus Garvey in, okay. the, in the middle when you first come in. Okay. I'm a Garveyite, which basically means we're Africans around the diaspora who feel like we have to build something powerful on the African continent. Okay. If African people worldwide are to be protected, uh, respected, and have opportunities uh, for the group. Mm. So we, some of us gravitate to Africa to get involved with that mission. And Marcus Garvey was one of the most brilliant um, uh, uh, thinkers and, and activists uh, that make that clear that this mission is necessary. Okay. Kwame Nkrumah, um, of course here in Ghana people know Kwame Nkrumah. Uh, not only was he a, a, a very significant figure here in Ghana, also well known around the world. 
And being well known around the world, I thought it would also be a nice introduction to Marcus Garvey for some of the people who don't know Garvey. And the reason I say that is because if you look at what I have for Kwame Nkrumah, okay. I know all of the people will know him. And if you look at the words I have, I talk about Nkrumah okay. having read Hegel, Marx, Engels, and all of the so-called huge intellectuals of Europe. But once he got to reading the, the philosophies and opinions of Marcus Garvey, that had more impact on him mm. than all of these Europeans who we are told are doing all the heavy thinking. Okay. So uh, even for even people who don't know who Marcus Garvey is very well, yeah, maybe yeah. heard through some reggae here or there, this puts him in some, some perspective. Yeah. Because this is how Kwame Nkrumah yeah. was impacted. Right. And we all know Kwame Nkrumah and his, his position in history. Okay. All right. Um, so things like the Black Star Line, the mm. things that you hear here, all of this came from uh, Marcus, Marcus Garvey. Garvey. Yeah. And so uh, that's why he's there. Uh, right. Down on the end, uh, Apoka Kanyani, I told you uh, my people come from the north, okay. from uh, Gruni. And so she was one of the heroes in the north around okay. the Bolgatenga area. Okay. Uh, and um, Queen T, who you've seen over there, she is, um, it just gives me a chance to talk to the students about the Africanness of ancient Kemet or what uh, they now call ancient Egypt. Okay. So she was one of the great queens of the 18th dynasty. So. Right. So I, I chose these, and of course, Tejangma, the first, and uh, Jonas Kabu, who were the first ones, the founder and the first chief of Nuningo, where okay. we're standing here. Oh, Even though okay. Prom Prom, Nuningo right, together, but right. we're actually physically in Nuningo. Nuningo. Mm -hmm. Right, thank you so much. I mean, so that is a, an introduction to the African ancestral war located here in Nuningo. And uh, we have our daddy telling us a lot about the place. So we will move to the other paintings in there whilst we talk about other things that we have in the ancestral world. So follow me as we go into the ancestral world. Right, right. So, uh, so you were telling us about uh, Liar Zari. Li Liar Zari. Yeah, yeah. Welcome to the African ancestral world. So let's, let's move to the war. With the war as we see, is there any form of special arrangement of the images that we have in the, on the war, or is just, uh, there's no special order of arrangement of the, the paintings on the war as we see? Well, I, I think I should have told you in the beginning, uh, there's a couple of things you should know about the paintings. Okay. First, the reason, the way I chose the paintings, what I did is I decided uh, which aspects or attributes I wanted the students to see and hopefully one day to emulate. Okay. And so I chose people, so I chose things like um, originality, uh, bravery, uh, creativity, genius, okay. leadership, nation building, all of these kind of things. And then I found people in African history that, I, that fit those kind of attributes. Okay. So that's how I chose them. Um, there's uh, over 90, I think 92 paintings here now. Okay. Now the painters themselves were just different people I found around Ghana here. You okay. know? So they done, they did a really nice job. So you'll the, see the painters are different people. They, eight different from, painters. Yeah. Eight different painters. Yeah, but they're oh. all from, you know, okay. around Accra, uh, Tema okay. area. Yeah. Okay. All right, so we have. Uh, so I asked whether there's a certain sort of special arrangement of the paintings. No, there's no special we, arrangement. The only one that has special arrangement is the very first one. The rest okay. are completely random. Okay. And I have the very first one, as you see, Eve, yeah. the mother of humanity, because okay. I wanted to start with the concept to make sure our people understood that the parents of humanity. Our species, which is called Homo sapiens sapiens, right. were Africans coming out of East Africa somewhere around 200,000 years ago. Mm. Okay. Now, no one left the African continent uh, until about 70,000 BC okay. or BCE. Okay. Which means that for two thirds of all of human history of our species, no one was outside the African continent. There were okay. no Chinese, there were no Europeans, there were no anything. Okay. So until the Africans began to come out of Africa about that time, then okay. we populated the world. Okay. So I, I tried to explain to the students how the skin colors change to European mm. and Asian and all the rest okay. uh, when we go through this whole logic. So okay. that's why I start there to let them know because in the Bibles that you have here and the mm. whites have brought you all kinds of 
ridiculous missionary material, material with yeah. all of these white Eves and white Adams yeah. and white this and white mm -hmm. that. And uh, it has a tendency to disempower the African, okay. especially the African child. Okay. So we want to set the record straight on that. Okay. There's no possibility of a European Eve and Adam and all the rest of this. Okay. I don't care how many times they tell you that, it's just <laughs> not possible. All right, all right. So this this to tell us about the evolution of humanity, the evolution of humanity. So the Eve is not there to actually represent the Bible Eve, but it's, it's about the beginning of humanity. Yes, yeah, see, this Bible Eve that you hear about is is some Europeans that they keep showing you pictures of. Okay. And it's not possible because 200,000 years ago, mm. 200,000 years ago, Okay. Uh, any scientist, I don't care if he's from China, if he's from America, okay. Russia, or okay. India, any scientist who knows anything about genetics will tell you this is established fact and has been for okay. probably more than half a century. Right. So if we look at some of the paintings, what inspired, I, mean, I believe that we have a lot of activists from the African continent that we if we want to have all of them here, we'll have a lot of them. What inspires some of the selections of the well, pictures well, that we have? Well, some of them, most people were activists in one form or another. Yeah. Political activists, intellectual activists, okay. um, cultural yes, activists, yes. Uh, all, all of the rest. So um, I guess you can call them activists. Okay. But they're just people of different talents that have contributed okay. in different ways to the, uh, yeah, to the growth and sustain... Mm. Uh, uplift of African people worldwide. I can see some Asa Hilliard, U.S. Mm. Ghana. This is the first time I'm seeing a name like that, Asa Hilliard, Asa Hilliard. U.S. Ghana. Oh, Asa, Asa Hilliard. Asa, Asa Hilliard. Hilliard. Mm -hmm. uh, he's one of our uh, premier scholars in the United States. Okay. Um, he was an Egyptologist, a, sci a, a um, psychologist, okay. historian, and all the rest. But he was all around just a a beautiful, brilliant, giving human being hmm. who spent his time trying to teach African people uh, in the U.S. especially okay. of our history and culture and and, and uh, who we are. Is he from Ghana? I can see U.S. Ghana. Uh, no, he was from the U.S., but he was installed in, in the central region. Okay. And so I have Ghana there, too. Oh, okay. He, All right. Yeah. All right. So what, what are some of the significant ones that you would like us to... Talk about Unfortunately, some... everyone on here is significant, so <laughs> I wouldn't put them there if they were not, uh, yes. because I've left hundreds of ancestors off. Right, right. So we're just in the middle of picking them, and there's so many more that mm. we would like to put I there. saw uh, Patrice Lumumba. Patrice Lumumba, yeah. Patrice Lumumba, one of the outstanding Africans that we have on the... We've uh, had in history. Yes. Yes. He's way down yes, there. Yes, he's way down there. We, we walk there. You want to walk there? Uh, yeah, we want to walk what there. What are you going to do with the rest of these? <laughs> All right, so, uh, okay. you know, we, you, okay, we would like to talk briefly about this ones as we move down. Well, any way you'd like to do it, it just depends the time you have. Right. Chinua uh, Achibe, we've read a lot about him in school in the university right. from uh, uh, the uh, secondary school uh, second cycle institution we've read about him in ghana here yeah. uh, can you give uh, for for the for the sake of our viewers can you give us a brief a brief history about him for those who don't know well tenue chebi first of all he's on the wall here because uh, his writing to me is very clear very succinct and gives you a very good feeling of what it must have been like pre-colonial, mm. during the transition, and also some of our behavior in the post-colonial times. So right. he has a very trenchant way of, of making that clear and making you feel it as a reader. Okay. Uh, but he has a long history. You know, he's an Igbo man uh, born there in Nigeria. He mm. was uh, worked for, uh, for Nigeria Broadcasting. Mm. He's, uh, um, of course, he's known all around the world. If you go, you'll see that they've been inviting him to University is yes. all over mm. the place yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, because yeah. of that. But he did. He represented. Uh, he was even a representative of the Igbo mm. group during the um, the Biafra Wars uh, okay. back in Nigeria, mm. sixty-seven to seventy. Mm. Uh, there's a lot, uh, a lot you can say right. about. Right, right. The Yasantwa history. Yasantua, we know. It, we know her in Ghana. Already. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Didan Kamathi. I always think this is interesting because Jerry Rawlings' son is Didan. Okay. But a lot of people who come to the wall and see this figure don't realize that this is the one that Jerry 
uh, named his son for. Oh, okay. Didan How, Kimathi. Kimathi. Mm. Oh, okay, 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 Kimathi. Kimathi. Okay, okay, and okay. Kimathi was a uh, Kenya. fighter out of uh -huh. Kenya. Right. They had a, a group of um, guerrilla fighters against the British. Oh, okay. They call them the Mau Mau, but they were really the Kikuyu or Kenya Land Freedom Army. All right. And they led, fought from the bush, just trying to uh, get back some of the sovereignty that they had lost from the British. Oh, okay, so that, he, he died in uh, 1957, that was when Ghana was attaining independence. Mm, okay, okay. Oh, okay. All, All right. right. Um, in Zenga, in Bande, she's uh, another warrior mm. from about 500 years ago in Angola. Of course, she was struggling against the Portuguese okay. to maintain their, their independence there okay. in Angola at that time. It wasn't called Angola then, but... We know it as Angola now. Oh, okay. Ajete, I think a lot of the people yeah, here will know Ajete 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 from okay. uh, Ghana, so I right. don't think I need the to The fighters. But he, he, he struggled to get the things that were due to him and the other soldiers. Right. He was killed, sparked the Accra riot, so right. you know the rest. Right. Amori's Bishop is very important. And he's small out small island in the Caribbean. He was okay. a barrister uh, out of... Well, actually, he studied law in, in the UK, but mm. he came back to his country and was trying to lead them to an uh, independent existence, independent of the West. But being okay. in the Caribbean, mm. the Americans couldn't allow that, so they finally ended up destroying mm. his revolution and, and invading the country and killing uh, lots of people. All right. The warrior Amazon, the so-called Amazon, Namatan warriors from Benin, which is, used to be Dahomey. Okay. These are the women who struggled against the French. Okay. Uh, during the colonial times, if you go to French literature, you can read a lot about okay. the heroism of these women. One of the main fathers of Pan-Africanism, someone called Edward Wilmot Blyden, okay. uh, from the Caribbean islands to, in this case, the Virgin Islands, St. Thomas. Mm -hmm. He's also established himself as an intellectual and a strong political figure there right. in Liberia. Right. Steve right. Biko, this gives me a chance to introduce apartheid to the students and even some of the teachers oh, okay. because once again they know all about what the French or someone else did okay. but don't even know about the apartheid that's taking place in their lifetime okay. on this African continent and Biko being anti-apartheid activist killed Sonny Ali Sonny Ali uh, this is where I get to tell the children about the old empires of Ghana, Mali, Songhai. I mean okay. I think some of you know that Ghana yeah. and Kruma named this Ghana yes, over the ancient yes. Ghana Empire yeah. West African Empire. Sonia Ali was the founder of the Songhai Empire, which is the last and largest of all of the West African empires. Oh, okay. Uh, Bahanzen, we just mentioned the, the, the Namatan. He was struggling against the French okay. colonialism. Okay. Called himself the Great Shark. Okay. Mary Makiba, a lot of people know her. Okay, Mama yeah, Africa, sure, the sure, singer, sure, sure. and all her anti apartheid activity. Right. Sheikh Anta Jup, one of our brilliant scholars. He's scholars, a, yeah. He's a. Um, Egyptologist, a, a physicist, a historian, and all the rest. Mm -hmm. Among other things, he demonstrated beyond any real shadow of a doubt that ancient Kemet or ancient Egypt was a mm -hmm. black African civilization. Mm -hmm. So all of these uh, comic books and illustrations that they keep feeding you here in Ghana with all of these, <laughs> you know, European, uh, Asian, and Arab-looking people building yeah. pyramids and sure, hauling. Sure, sure. This is a complete nonsense because there was no one there but Africans at the time. All right, so all right. You, you, need to, you, you guys need to have a big bonfire and just throw all of that. Those books into it. Yeah, every time a missionary brings you something, you should just toss it there. They are distorting history. It's more than distortion. <laughs> okay, J.J. Dessaline, everybody knows about... Uh, Everyone knows about our man, uh, Napoleon, but okay. then these Africans uh, were able to sack Napoleon's army okay. and st establish their own republic there in Haiti. Okay. Haiti is the name the, the natives gave the place right. and the Africans came. When they took over, they gave the natives right. the name back to the country. Mm. Washington Carver was one of our most brilliant um, um, uh what am I trying to say? Agri agriculturalist, agricultural genius okay. in the U.S. Nerere, most people know him, one of the early founders okay. of OAU yeah. and, and also supporting a lot of the frontline liberation fighting oh, right. there in, in East and okay. South Africa. Ephraim Amu, mm, which you, you know, should know right, here, is one of the fathers of the cultural right. maintenance and, you know, yes. the songs that come from there. Harriet right. Tubman, during the slavery time, she was a one of the women who uh, would, would go into the plantations, mm. get the Africans, and uh, lead them out on what they call an underground so railroad we, we to get to their freedom. So we have a lot of paintings over here, and if we go on, we'll go on and on and okay. on. So, but there, you see, well, among, the point uh, and point. Okay. Yes, among all the Africans that we have on this wall, 
there's something unique is that they have an afro hair or rasta there's there's been a, some sort of conversation in the media space nowadays about the rasta hair mm -hmm. what, what what do you have to say as a pan-african is what do you have to say about this kind of treatment that we're hearing now on the rastafarian uh let's say group or movement well i have two feelings of it the the, okay. the first thing is that uh, anything African or that uh, African people are doing that is non-European and that is part of what people in the African world have done before mm -hmm. shouldn't be uh, just thrown away like that because someone said this is not our standard. Okay. You just saw Didan Kimanti mm. with his Rasta. Yes, yes. That's who Rawlings named his boy for this yes. man. So you're telling me if Didan Kimanti with all his greatness showed up to your school there, you would sack him. <laughs> it would be a disgrace. Oh, sure, he's, sure, he's, sure, 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 sure. He's much more of a leader than anyone who's shown up at the place. Mm. So how would you sack him? Right. That's the first thing. The second thing is there's a lot of debate about some things that you know, I wonder, there's so many other things going on in Ghana mm. of great importance. Yes. You know, the Chinese are crushing you. All of this thing yes. is going on. Mm. And, uh, you know, we're all excited about that. Right. So sometimes I wonder, you know, we're missing some things some and things. a lot of energy on others. But I do think there's an argument to be had about the cultural aspect right. and why we are so intent on pushing away another African with slightly different style yeah it doesn't make sense to me speaking about this we are standing right in front of hail selassie yeah, of selassie. ethiopia mm -hmm. yes well Hale selassie uh, rastafari right. you know, a lot of people <laughs> a lot of people don't realize that you know coming in you know as a child you're like liege mm. to farai mcconan right. that's his name liege being like a small child in an honorable in a royal type environment right. there uh, among the amharics at least and uh then when you get older and you're still in that royal lineage and you're a young man, you become a Ras, like a Ras, like a prince. Okay. So he was Ras Tafari Makonin. Oh, okay. Okay. So okay. that's where they get Ras Tafari. Right. Okay. Because okay. that's the name. You know, people come with all kind of crazy things here right. without even knowing the origin. Right. And then, of course, when he got to be the head of state, in this case, they switch into the Gaia's name, mm. uh, which is Haile Selassie. Right, so, right. But anyway, he's here for his effort of reform, mm. his resistance against the Italians, and uh, also being one of the, the early founders of uh, Africa. Right, and, right. We, 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 okay, we, so we, have, we have a very wonderful place here, I must say. We have a very wonderful place here. This is going to teach our youth about the history of Africa. So anyone that comes here get to learn about the rich history of Africa. Anyone who comes, all of the students who come, I've had lots and lots of schools over the last four or five years. Mm. And uh, it's free, so okay. there's nothing. If the students come, they bring the, you know, busloads of students. It doesn't cost anything. Okay. Uh, they come from Accra, Tema, of course, locally here. And uh, the whole objective is not to... It's not a business thing. It's a mm. thing that we just need. If it were up to me, we would have an ancestral wall in every region of Ghana. Oh, okay. Uh, even with more emphasis on different people from those regions. Okay. In, in addition to the global African history oh, okay. across the diaspora. We have a very big one here, Nagbewa. Nagbewa. Well, you know, we try to make sure that we cover a lot of the important Africans in Ghanaian history. Mm. Nagbewa being the, fa the father of... Uh, you know, the, the, all the ones that come under his lineage, the mm. Moshi, yeah. the Dagombas, the uh, Mamprusi, mm. the Numbas, all of these come under Nagbewa's line. Okay. And so uh, we give my son, others give detailed oh. presentations about him oh, being okay. from the north. Right. Yeah, we'll say to the first. The first people know the first yes. Asante. Yes, yes. You know, we just had the serious rainstorm a few days ago. Yes, yeah, sure, so sure. You'll see in some of these pictures, it's really knocked even some of the paint off. Oh, okay. That's how yeah. heavy it was. Sankara, you know him. Mm. Amenarenus, this woman fought against the Roman army, sacked them out of Kush, okay. pushed them back into Egypt. Okay. Menelik, who was able to uh, uh, beat the Italians. To Malcolm X. Malcolm I've, I've, X. I've seen a lot about this man. Malcolm X is one of our shining heroes in the U.S. Uh, the X on the name is because he refused to accept his slave master's okay. name. Okay. So he doesn't know where in Africa he's from, so he just used X, X. instead oh, of okay. taking the name. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. And, uh, 
Well, yes. when, when I entered here, someone was, one of my friends was telling me about the, is it Akhenaten? Mm, Akhenaten. Akhenaten. Mm-hmm. Akhenaten. Mm. Yeah. Well, they call him, if you just kind of look it up generically, uh, the father of monotheism. There's some debate about how even you even define monotheism, but suffice it to say that the religion, quote unquote, spiritual systems that they had in ancient Kemet mm. were the the foundation of what has come out of that. So okay. uh, Judaism, Christianity, Islam, all have come out of this foundation. Okay. Now you have Christians and people, Muslims and all of the rest okay. giving you something that you already had right. uh, before they took what they took and did what they did and then gave it back to you right. in the form that right. they gave right. it to you. Right. So I, I, And you've accepted it. <laughs> But uh, we're, working, we're, 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 we're working on that. Right, Robert right. Robert Nesta Mali. Well, okay. We all know Rasta. Uh, yeah, Rasta. Uh, uh, Bob Mali. So. Bob Mali. Uh, Wangari Matai, Kenya, the one who won the Nobel Prize for the ecology and mm. planting the trees. Right. Singbe Pierre, who has uh, led a revolt on the slave ship Amistad to try to come back to mm. Africa. Okay. Maharero tried to stop the Germans from... Uh, massacring in huge numbers his people there in a okay. really a gen- small genocide there in the Oliva Tambo. Uh, Tambo from South Africa, anti apartheid. Uh, Augustino Neto leading them against the Portuguese in Angola. Mm. Zabeth, this, this looks so innocent. She looks so innocent. No, Zabeth is a young girl who always, in every case, did whatever she could to get off the plantations in Haiti. Okay. She started at nine years old. She would run away. They would beat her, they would brand her, they would torture her, but every time she got another chance, okay. she got out. So she represents the indomitable human spirit and the an indomitable African spirit okay. of the time to not ever be enslaved. Oh, okay. Baby Ray fought against the British in what they call the hut tax wars, okay. where they charge you a hut tax, and hut you've been in forever. Okay. He said no, so they went to war. Mumi, he was another brilliant politician. Mm. Unfortunately, he went to Geneva and was poison with thallium by the very whites he was negotiating mm. with. Uh, Sekohuni of South Africa struggled against the Boers and the British. Uh, Nahanda, spirit mm-hmm. woman in Zimbabwe, uh, who, who raised the, the confidence of the men during the wars of Shemarenga or liberation against the British. Martin, Martin Luther, Luther King, King Jr. One of our uh, great uh, moral wow. and uh, uh, human rights leaders, Hatshepsut. Uh, one of the female pharaohs, because a lot of people don't know that the African pharaohs all, also had African female pharaohs. In oh, okay, the okay, and okay. Hatshepsut okay. being probably the best known. Khaliderat, which is the man who was able to kick the Arabs out of mm. uh, Nubia, which is today like scary. northern. northern uh, it looks very scary. Well, I, I tried to pick someone who would look intimidating. <laughs> Uh, Muhammad Ali, the greatest of all times, the right, greatest boxer right, of all right. times, and also he's there for his political yeah, uh, sure, resistance sure, sure. to being uh, taken into the military mm. to fight in a place he had no business. That George Joke, uh, Damal, the king of Kyor and singer, okay. had the struggle against the French who tried to run a railroad mm. across his place. Antonio Maceo, one of the main generals who led the Cubans in the War of Independence against the Spanish. Patrice Lumumba, you mentioned a little yes. bit earlier. Mumba has, uh, he's here also talk about the rubber trade and the 10 million Congolese Africans who died at the hands of, of Leopold and the Belgians and the, and the rubber trade. Right. 10 million right. that we lost in that. Well, 10 million Africans were. 10 million Africans died, uh, worked to death or killed during the rubber trade okay. area there in the Congo because that's where the most rubber right. was in the world. Right. Right. At the turn of last century when the rubber was right. becoming popular. Kwabanika struggled against the Germans. Mugabe will be here, and I know all of you love Mugabe. Tell me you like Mugabe. I like Mugabe. All right, all right. <laughs> okay, you like No, he, he's one of the outstanding Pan-Africanists when we, 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 we uh, you know, I've grown up to come and listen to him. I've seen him. Uh, I've read about him. And uh, in as much as he, 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 he governed for a very long period, he has made a lot of impact in, in terms of championing the cause of Pan-Africanism. Yeah, you know, and... Um, like a lot of these leaders, there's two sides, there's always imperfections, but, mm. you know, he's trying to get the land back for the rightful owners, and yeah. he's fought for that, yeah. whereas others didn't do the same. Elijah right. Muhammad. Um, let's, let's continue. Okay. 
uh, the U.S. He, he was able to organize blacks in the U.S. from Ida B. Wells, who was against the lynching crusades and campaigns that the whites had where they'd hang Africans okay. on weekends for entertainment for themselves, their families, mm. and their children. Akelo was able to fight the Omani Arabs to try to get the land back, the power back for the Fela Africans Kuti. in Zanzibar. Fela Kuti is a Kuta, you know, is a resistance musician there in Nigeria. Right. Right. Uh, Zumbi of Brazil. Zumbi, uh, they organized their own um, thing called a Quilombo, which is mm. their own state in the mountains of Brazil as they escaped from the Portuguese mm. slave plantation. Nascimento, another brilliant uh, Brazilian scholar. Joma okay. of the uh, Namibia, of course, they struggle against the white South Africans who yeah. colonized them. In Namibia, Booker T. Washington, one of our premier educators mm. in the U.S., B.B. King, King, King of the Blues, okay. uh, with his uh, guitar, Lucille, okay. Walter Rodney Good from name. another Caribbean place called Diana, okay. uh, South America, Caribbean. He's, he wrote a book, everyone should look this up, called How Europe Underdeveloped Africa. How European? How Europe Underdeveloped Africa. Oh, okay, How Europe He's Underdeveloped one our, Africa. One of okay. our most brilliant scholars. Oh, okay. He's from now. Guyana. Diana, yes. Uh, okay. Which is the South America, Caribbean, sea area. Oh, all right, all right. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, queen Amina, mm. uh, the great uh, house of queen, half a century ago there in northern Nigeria today. Okay. Manlane, who is, see, 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 all of this happened with the weather here. Oh, okay. Right. Manlane, who um, uh, founded Filemo, who was struggling with, with Michelle, who we mm. passed back there, okay. against the Portuguese trying to free themselves in Mozambique. Garrett Morgan, he's an inventor. The traffic light bridge okay. that you see on the road. Okay. The, the gas mask that okay. they, they use. He's the inventor of yeah, the lot traffic people, light. Yeah, a lot of people don't know black men invented their traffic light. Whoa, Charlie, let's, let's take note of this. And also the... Uh, the Garrett Morgan. Garrett Morgan. Yeah. He invented traffic lights. Mm -hmm. and, and also the, the uh, gas mask. Okay. The, the breathing mask that right. they use at the fire Oxygen. department. Yeah, so he's cool. also the one that invented that. Wow. So he's just one of the... Great thinkers. Franz Fanon, speaking of great thinkers, okay. one of our, our and the world's most uh, intense intellectuals from Martinique mm. wrote a book you should all look for called Wretched of the Earth, also Black Face, White Mask, and some okay. other ones. John Talimbwe, who is a, a theologian, studied in the U.S., but when he got back to Malawi, tried to you know, get his people free from the British, okay. so he ended up having to go back to war or okay. at least struggle against them. Mm. Seiko Toure, a lot of Ghanaians know him for having brought Kwame Nkrumah in as co-president. Right. And Nkrumah was deposed, but he's also uh, uh, tried to maintain his independence against the French, mm. more so than most other French-speaking African countries. Okay. Uh, speaking of Martinique, Amé Césaire, one of the brilliant writers, scholars, poets, uh, people starting... Uh, something called Nigritude, which is a um, literary movement among African, French-speaking Africans around the diaspora. Samurai Touré, who is okay. really the most effective fighter against the, the French in West Africa. Okay. Uh, Kwame Touré, who was known as Stokely Carmichael when I was growing up, also from the Caribbean, but spent a lot of time in the U.S. Okay. where we knew him as, as uh, Stokely Carmichael. He took Kwame from Kwame Nkrumah, Touré from oh, Seiko okay. Touré, oh, and okay. that's how his name okay. came together. All right. Two of our most brilliant um, mm. and productive and accessible uh, scholars from the United States, mm. John Henry Clark and Yosef Benyakinen, who are our master, master teachers. Winnie Mandela, mm. the other Mama Africa, Mama Africa, stood thick and thin, took all of the arrows, mm. and uh, didn't get the recognition that we think she deserved, but she's going to get it from Her funeral brought about a lot of controversies. Mm, well, the fighters stood against some of those fighting her. Well, you have to be careful what you read in BBC. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And uh, Francis Cress Wilson, who has helped us understand the European mindset so you don't get involved with this uh, useless discussion about um, how to change their moral okay. <laughs> proclivities. Uh, all right. So this is about 92 paintings. Mm. 92 paintings. Right. And that's what we've been talking about. We've, we've spoken about all the artworks that we can see uh, on the wall here in the African ancestral wall. Uh, you said you, you, you're doing this, uh, you, this is not, this has not, you don't incur any cost or you don't take any money for people who come here. No, no, no. But you, as the paintings are fading out, you need some cash yeah, to some fix them. Yeah, some of them, them, yeah, so we're, we're, 
uh, we're looking at ways to get a few, we're starting to get some few contributions just for, you know, some of these repairs to the mm. wall. I'm building a library over here on the bottom floor. Oh, okay. And an all-purpose room in the middle and some more accommodations on the top. Oh, okay. Over here so we can bring the students in on the weekends. Okay. And the people in on the weekend and have different programs also but with no cost. But, yeah, people will con contribute just to try to help some maintenance and all that. Okay. And we'll kind of begin and campaign to do that a little more because it is costly for me sure. to try to do it, build it, have them paint it and maintain it. But I do the best I can. Okay, so we, we, we can use this platform to call for support. Those who like the history, those who like to read about the history of Africa, this is our daddy here telling us a lot about the war and the African history. And he has told us about the project that he's embarking on. Anyone who is willing to support this project kindly get in touch with them. If you go on all social media platforms, the African Ancestral War page is there. They can get yeah, you through there. Yeah, uh, Instagram and Facebook. Facebook. And whatever, you know. This right, thing. right. So um, we're, we'll, we'll organize a little better for you to be able to contribute if you want to. Right now, it's not really set up that well. It's just usually the people who come by here. Mm -hmm. but. But we're working on, you know, figuring out how to make it easy for people to contribute if they'd like to. Thank you so much for taking us around uh, to have the conversation on the paintings on the wall. No uh, it gave us a, a, a great insight on the, some of the history of Africa that we need to know. Mm. Uh, now, let's come back to, this is a very wonderful place if we take a look around we have a very wonderful environment yes. aside the education on the wall what other thing can, uh, goes on here well you know we have a restaurant there and we have nice guest rooms here too okay. so if you'd like to see them we can also show you that right and right. Uh, but we're really just trying to make it a space for people to come uh, who want to meet other people who are thinking and talking about um, solving some of these problems and uh, okay. And I always say, one thing that we're trying to do with the young people is uh, create the Africans we need okay. to solve the problems we have. Because okay. a lot of times when we start talking to young men your age, yeah. you know, you all are, are very calm uh, given the circumstances that you're in. Okay. And sometimes we say, how can you have such calm in the middle of such chaos? Okay. And I think what we're trying to do is is empower the young ones to come up and recognize that uh, if you find yourself in chaos, you may have to take some dramatic measures to rectify that chaos. And right now, that's not seeming to be our disposition. Okay. So we're trying to build the confidence and build the, the intellect and build the uh, ability uh, for young African people to come up mm -hmm. and solve these problems. And right. uh, you're going to have to do a lot of work and go sure. through a lot of pain but if you know who you are you know your capability uh, Marcus Garvey used to say what man has done man can do okay. so he's showing you what you have done so you know that it can be repeated mm -hmm. against what the Europeans Chinese and even a lot of uh, confused Africans will tell you are mm -hmm. overwhelming odds right. but the odds are not overwhelming it's just in your head All right so aside the painting that we come here to read about our history you have the guest room yeah we yeah, have yeah. the restaurant up there right do, do we right. have special days that people can come here and then have fun all every day every day is anybody who comes any day and we mm. walk them around the wall mm. whether there's one or two or 20 or 100 it doesn't really matter yeah. it's better to try to call you know if you have a bigger group mm. you know because sometimes i might not be around you okay. know so you have to but even if I'm not around, my, my son, if he's here, him and my daughter, sometimes they can walk people through. So, right. yeah, it's, it's, it's right. a resource. Right. Yeah, that's what right. it is. It's a resource. Right. right. Okay, so thank you so much for spending time. Uh, we've been here. Can you introduce yourself once again to the last time? Okay, J Jerry Johnson. Yes. Uh, African Ancestor Wall, Malebna's Ocean View Restaurant and Guest House. Malebna's is spelled M-M-A-L-E-B-N-A apostrophe S. Right. So if you Google on Google Maps and all of that, I think it will come up with a lot of 
pictures that people put up there, I guess. I don't know how right. that works. Yeah. Right. So we've been speaking to Mr. Jerry Johnson. Mm -hmm. Jerry Johnson, he has been taking us around to educate us on the history of Africa and giving us a brief insight or a great insight about the African ancestral war and everything that is happening here. So if you want to have any sitting, any gathering, you can also book this place and have your parties, your weddings, your outdooring uh, over here. If you want, or if you want a place to relax on weekends or weekdays, uh, this place is the right place. Yeah, even for... a lot of the people in Prom Prom haven't even really known about us. Right. You know, and New Ningo, but they're, they're finding out. Right. Some of them are hearing about, seeing us actually online and going, this right. place is here? Yes. And sure. they come just to see it. So, right, so right. So we're around. You know, so yeah. we welcome you to the African Ancestral Wall located here in New Ningo. Located here in New Ningo, in the Ningo Prom Prom district. So I'm going to ask him one question I have been asking everyone. I've been asking everyone that I interviewed this very question. If you have been given the opportunity to change one thing in Africa, what would be that one thing? I would dramatically replace the curriculum starting at age zero okay. <laughs> all the way through SHS. Okay. And uh, make sure we know who we are and not so much who everyone else is. Because the curriculum is, the way it is now, it um, tends to... Uh, poison the child and it really does uh, strip him or her of their confidence of being African and what they can and have achieved. Okay. So if I could change one thing, the whole socialization process through education at the youngest age possible and uh, I think from there we'll have a chance because a lot of the other efforts of trying to, to change people's minds at a certain age is very, very difficult. Let's get it into our youngsters early, and then we'll have, uh, they'll have the fortitude to uh, change Africa in the way that we would like to see. All right, all right. Yeah. Thank you so much. So, so as we've always said, thank you for watching uh, this documentary or this interview, and uh, we'll come your way next time with a great and another educative uh, documentary on uh, another project that, that we are embarking on. So thank you for watching.